What's up guys? Uh, Eli here, back for a new stuff video. We're going to be doing all black metal today. Got a pretty good stack here, so let's uh, dive into it. Yes, I am wearing a new hat. I got, uh, yeah, I thought you'd ask. I thought you'd never ask. Um, I got this sent to me by Brian Arkham. It's a Wraith hat, if you can see that very, it's not showing up on the camera very well, the band Wraith. Um, well, I don't own anything by Wraith, but I have heard them before, and I think they're pretty cool, and this hat rules. Um, I'm also wearing my new Terrifier t-shirt. This shirt is so sick. There's so much going on in it. thought you'd want to see that. But uh, anyways, so, like I said, all black metal today. Um, you know, you're not going to see anything here, you know, fresh and new and, you know, trendy or whatever the kids are talking about. This is... Mostly stuff, you know, filling in gaps in my collection. Most Mostly old releases that I just never had, you know, I missed out on. Um, stuff like that. It's, it's uh, you know, some stuff that I took a chance on as well. Because, you know, that's how we do it. We're going to start off with Ophthalamia from Sweden. Uh, this is a uh, compilation came out in uh, 2019. It's called... Uh, What's it called? Alesni, or, or Alicia 2. Uh, this came out on Soul Cellar Records. Originally, this was a compilation that came out in 1997 on uh, the famous, uh, or the infamous, Necropolis Records. Uh, this is that same release, but it's, uh, I believe it's remastered, and it's got some bonus tracks and stuff. I think it's two discs. Yeah, two discs. So Ophthalamia are one of those cool bands where I, I'm sure many, many of you know about them. Well, I just broke the case, but whatever. <laughs> I'm sure many of you know about them, but a lot of people I feel like don't. Um, so they were black metal from Sweden, you know, formed by It from Abruptum. Uh, one of the albums, I think the first, I think it was the first album had John Nodvite from uh, Dissection on it. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of like Swedish heavy hitters played in this band. Uh, you know, when you when I say Swedish black metal, you might you might go, oh, I you know I know what to expect. But this is not your typical Swedish black metal. This is not, you know, your icy, super fast, you know, semi technical black metal. Don't get me wrong, I love all that stuff. But this is a completely different beast entirely. Uh, Ophthalmia go for uh, they they almost never venture into fast territory. No blast beats or anything like that. This is more doomy black metal, uh, a lot of groove. You get the occasional like kind of Black Sabbath sounding uh, riff. It's uh, yeah, very slow, doomy, groovy, but it totally works uh, on paper. That uh, on paper that wouldn't work for me, but Ophthalmia somehow just pull it off masterfully. <laughs> And then we've got Ancient from Norway with their first single. Obviously, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, so originally, this was a single from 1994. Uh, but this is kind of a compilation, really. It has that single, which is amazing. Uh, that, but also has the Trolltar EP. And it's got some unreleased tracks. So this came out on Hammerheart Records. Which, Hammerheart's a good label, Dutch label. But they're also known for kind of just dropping the ball with... with they just fuck up <laughs> with artwork and stuff like that. So... I just don't understand why it's, you know, it's this, you know, they're, they're classic single, but they put the Trolltar artwork on the front. Maybe they couldn't license the other artwork. I'm not sure. Um, and she, I, like I said, the Trolltar EP is on here, but it's not, this isn't about the Trolltar EP. So why they use that cover art, I'm not sure. It's just, it's weird to me, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so Ancient are kind of one of the more underrated of the uh, Norwegian black metal bands. Uh, you know, they weren't quite as early as Dark Throne. They weren't super late either. I think they had a demo in 93 or 94. They weren't, you know, they weren't super late to the party or anything like that. They were, they were right there. Uh, I don't know. I just, you, 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 you don't usually hear Ancient lumped in with, you know, Mayhem and, and Emperor and stuff like that. Maybe they just weren't, you know, friends with those guys. Maybe they weren't part of that scene. I'm not sure what the story is, but uh, I always really liked them. Uh, you know, they would go on to put out some some kind of cheesier symphonic, you know, gothic black metal stuff that I don't, I don't think works too well. Uh, some of it does, but the early stuff I just think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, if you want more 
classic Norwegian black metal and you've, you've heard all the, you know, the A-listers, uh, if you haven't heard Ancient, give them a shot, man. Uh, everything up until, and including their uh, second full length, I think up to, everything up to that, I think it's just very, very good. <laughs> Then we got a couple of uh, releases from another Norwegian black metal band, Gehenna. Uh, so this is a single, uh, pretty cool, a uh, single called Deadlights. Came out in uh, 1998. Yeah, this came out in 1998. Um, this came out on Moonfog Records, which is cool because I collect everything from Moonfog. I'll, I'll, if I don't already have it, I'll buy it. Uh, did I need a single? <laughs> For, uh, you know, that came out on an album that I already have? No, but of course, you know, I love Gehenna. Of course I was going to buy it. This comes from their kind of like uh, more death metal period. You know, they had a death metal phase. They started off more of a black metal band, uh, occasionally kind of, occasionally a symphonic black metal band. Uh, they went on to, you know, push pretty hard into death metal territory. They never went full death metal. It's always more of a black death, but they added a lot of death metal to their sound, and this is this comes from that period. So, um, comes from you know on one of those cool. This is what they used to do with singles back in the '90s. For those that weren't there for that, I, I love them. I love these uh, slim cases. I kind of miss them. I, I think they should bring them back. <laughs> And then I have the second full-length album by Gehenna from 1996. This is Malice, the Third Spell, I believe. If I, I think it was called the Malice, the Third Spell, right? Pretty sure it was. Yeah, the Third Spell. Um, just says Malice on the front. Never really did like that cover art too much, but whatever. Uh, this came out on uh, Cacophonous Records out of uh, England. Another legendary, you know, black metal record label from the 90s. So yeah, this is pre-death metal phase. This is when they were... This is pretty much right here a, a full-on symphonic black metal album, and I love it. Uh, it's, you know, it kind of it kind of builds upon what they did with the first album and the EP before that, and it kind of just takes it... Uh, takes it to the... Takes it into the more symphonic territory. There were symphonic... You know, they had symphonic stuff going on in the previous two releases, but it was... It was more subdued, and this is more, you know, getting into like Demi Borger and Emperor style uh, symphonic black metal territory. But I love, you know, I'm a huge symphonic black metal fan, so uh, bands from the 90s playing that style, I, I will listen to that all day. And Gehenna are one of the, uh, the best to do it. <laughs> Then from 1994, we have the third album from Burzum. Um, what's it called? That? Yeah, His Slice Set Tar Os. Um, a controversy aside, you know, I love the early Burzum stuff. I never did have this album. Yeah, I think Varg Vigerness is a fucking idiot, but uh, again, the first, uh, his first three albums I think are just stellar. And uh, didn't have this in my collection. Had to have it. Uh, this. You could definitely argue that this is the strongest Burzum album, but my favorite would be, um, I don't know, my favorite would probably be the second album. No, I take that back. My, I'm going to go with the fourth album. That, that, that's my favorite. That, uh, I love Burzum with the more ambient touches. I think it really works. Uh, so this is a uh, Misanthropy Records re-release. I don't know what year this came out, uh, but yeah. Again, classic album. Had to have it in my collection. Uh, you know, don't criticize me too harshly. <laughs> then from 2003, we get the fifth album from Cradle of Filth. Uh, what's his band? Uh, Damnation and a Day. So this was their like major label album. This came out on a subsidiary of uh, Sony, if I remember correctly. 
so this was, you know, kind of a big deal for them. And this was also the first Cradle of Filth album to lose me. This was the first album that came out that I, I didn't dig. Uh, <laughs> so I got rid of my original copy years back and I saw this used at a record store, a couple bucks. Thought I'd grab it, see if, I, you know, see if it's aged well with me. I, I doubt it, but because <laughs> I really do love the early Cradle of Filth stuff. I will stand by it. I'll admit it any day. I'll defend it. I'll fight for that early Cradle of Filth stuff. Uh, but, and even some of the later stuff's really good. I don't think they ever put out an album that's just like purely horrible. Uh, I just remember this album just being kind of boring. It didn't do anything for me, but yeah, I haven't listened to it for over 10 years, so we'll see. From 1994, we have the debut full length from Mortuary Drape from Italy, All Witches Dance. Uh, this is classic stuff. I never had this in my collection. I have a couple of their early albums. Um, I've always needed this one. This is a repress uh, from... Repress... I'm not sure. I think this... I'm pretty sure it's a repress. Yeah, repress from 1998. Um, white and Black record label never heard of that it, it's not the best i mean it sounds fine uh <laughs> the layout kind of sucks like the uh the cover art they blew it up as you can see and it just it, it looks bad um and then you got the uh you got the logo on the on the case as a sticker i hate when they do that as well because when the case breaks what are you gonna do but anyways all, all those complaints aside man this is a killer album now this is not my favorite mortuary drape album but it is still absolutely fantastic uh, if you've never heard mortuary drape um and you're a black metal fan obviously you're missing out if you if you like stuff like uh if you like black metal that that um you know it's not like the norwegian stuff or the south american stuff it it I'd say it, it, it more compares to the Greek stuff for me. That you know, more uh, more warm riffing instead of that cold icy tremolo stuff. It's more more w warm riffing with like heavy metal. You know, more heavy metal influenced, um, you know, but very very sinister and occult. Uh, you know, I'd I'd compare more Dory Drake to you know I'd compare them more to like Rotting Christ than I would to like Dark Throne or anything like that. So, um, you know, there weren't I. Italy was not like a hotbed of black metal in the 90s. Uh, so it's cool that they have, you know, at least a couple of bands that kind of have their own style and, and uh, you know, puts, uh, puts Italy on the map for 90s black metal. And another old school band, uh, Elastis from Switzerland uh, with Revenge. This is their, their what, uh, fourth album from 1998. Came out on Century Media Records. Now, Elastis, uh, they're a very early black metal band. I mean, they're bordering on first wave. They formed in, like, 1989, if I remember correctly. They had a demo out in 1990. So they play, uh, they're, they're, they're almost like a, a cousin band to Sam Ale. Uh, if you like Sam Ale from Switzerland... Alas, this sound almost exactly like that. Uh, I'm not sure why, but they just do. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. I was going to say maybe not quite as good, but I'd argue that those those first couple of Alastis records are really good. I think they're pretty much on par with the early uh, Sam Ale stuff. Now, I have not heard this album, but uh, yeah, the early stuff is, again, like Sam Ale, it's kind of that first wavy, uh, like Hellhammer inspired, you know, very primitive kind of slow, plodding, uh, barbaric black metal. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear this because I heard later on in their career they're, they went a more like goth metal direction. So I don't know if this is in that phase, but we'll see. Maybe I'll dig it either way. <laughs> we got the fourth album from 1998, a lot of 1998 stuff here, from And Oceans out of Finland, uh, Century Media Records again. Now, And Oceans were a band that were constantly changing. Every time they put something out, it sounded different. And this was kind of like in their industrial metal phase. Uh, 
I would still say that there's some black metal here, but it's more industrial than anything. You know, it's very of the time, you know, late 90s when industrial metal was, you know, becoming this huge thing. Clearly, and Ocean's were paying attention to that. Um, this is pretty good. It's not really my cup of tea. I'm not a huge industrial metal guy, but there's just enough black metal in there to, you know, to keep me interested. I more prefer their... Uh, Sometimes they would go in like a symphonic black metal direction. I, I prefer that style. Um, or they would just play like a weird experimental black metal. They, again, they were always doing something different, and I always admired them for that. I don't know. I gave this one listen. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's, uh, it's not really for me. I'd probably listen to it again. I don't know. Anyone heard this? What do you think? In 2008, we have the f uh, fourth album by Keep of Callison, another Norwegian black metal band. Um, another band that were, they were kind of early, but they weren't real early. They were like mid-90s, if I remember correctly. So they were a couple years late to the party. Uh, but they still, you know, they had some good albums. Those early, their early albums are really good. Um, past this, past this, everything I, that I've heard is, is terrible. Uh, two discs, discs here. I don't remember what's on the second disc. Uh, and so, oh, it's a DVD. Uh, so this album is pretty different from their, you know, the early um, kind of symphonic-y black metal stuff. This is more, uh, I don't know what you would call this. This is very, the black metal is toned down and there's tons of like traditional heavy metal influences going on here. Lots of guitar solos. It's very epic. It's uh, It's almost like epic. Viking metal. I don't know if I'd call it Viking metal. I don't know how to describe it, but it's it, it's way less black metal than the early stuff. There's still some black metal influences, but a, you know, a lot more guitar solos and you know, epic song structures. And it's I didn't like it when it came out, to be honest. I didn't like it at all. But uh, you know, after uh, you know, letting it sit for a long time, I think it's a pretty fucking cool record. <laughs> And from this year, we have this uh, re-release of the second album from Behemoth. Uh, this was uh, titled Grom, originally released in 1996 on uh, uh, Solis Solistitium Records, which I think, is it a Polish label? I can't remember. It was a European label, put out some pretty cult stuff. So Metal Blade Records have been re-releasing the early Behemoth stuff, and they've been putting them on these digibooks, these really, really nice digibooks. I love these things. Um, and I also love early Behemoth. Uh, I don't care about what they're doing nowadays. It bores the shit out of me, but uh, their early stuff, man, is just really good, really good early Polish black metal. Um, two discs here. You got, you know, you got the album, and then you got some bonus stuff, of course. Even the CDs look really nice. And yeah, bonus stuff. So this is a great album. Uh, this is kind of like a, a thrashy and at times even kind of pagany sounding raw black metal. Uh, it's just fantastic. Not my favorite of the early Behemoth stuff, but it's pretty close. Um, I think this is a bit of an underrated, you know, second wave black metal album. You know, people have gotten so tired of Behemoth because they, with them getting so popular and always just being, they're just always out there in the public eye. You know, they've become these, uh, you know, these like big rock stars. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. All the underground black metal fans, I think, are pretty over Behemoth. But if you've been into black metal a long time, I think you could admit, like I do, that their early stuff is pretty fun killer. <laughs> And then we have two 2023 uh, full-length albums by Graveworm. Start with Morbid Trinity, uh, the 21st full-length album. Uh, haven't listened to this one yet. We got Mark Riddick cover art there. This cover art uh, and the title of the album, I believe, was originally supposed to be uh, for a three-way split that never happened. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> And 
22nd full-length album. We have The Dark Dominion. Uh, this one I have listened to. Uh, this is very good. This is, uh, I'd probably say, one of the better Grave Worm albums overall. Uh, I, I like, you know, everything that they've done, but uh, this one is... I guess you could say out of, you know, the modern stuff, the last 10 or 15 years, probably one of my favorites. I've only listened to it once so far, so, you know, I haven't spent the time with it that I have all the other albums, obviously. You know, I've talked about Grave Worm on here plenty of times, but I'll do it again, and just in case you aren't familiar with them. Pretty much started by one guy. Uh, he's had members come and go over the years, but uh, he's always been the you know the the uh, the glue that holds it together. Uh, started in the early '90s, like '92 or something like that, and they just play like this uh, kind of like first wave, like mixing first wave black metal, you know, uh, Celtic Frost and Hellhammer, uh, with some second wave black metal. There's a little bit of that, a little bit of that in there. There's a a heavy dose of doom. There's a little bit of death metal in there. Uh, maybe even a, a just a smattering of thrash every now and then. It's kind of everything, uh, all all at once. But uh, first and foremost, I think you know the the first wave black metal is 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 you know probably the primary influence. But it's it's always raw. It's always uh, it's always nasty and very very primitive. So if you like your black metal completely primitive and you know kind of first wavy. Uh, I'd say definitely check them out. So, anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, what do you think? Anything here that you've heard? Anything here that you haven't heard? And maybe you're gonna check out. You're gonna make fun of me for listening to, <laughs> to Cradle of Filth, or you're gonna call me a racist for buying a Burzum album. Uh, to be fair, I didn't buy it from Varg, so he's not profiting from it. But uh, uh, whatever. How about Behemoth? Uh, any any old school Behemoth fans out there? I feel like. Again, people have gotten so sick of them that like nobody even talks about the early black metal stuff anymore, which is a shame. I think I think that stuff's great, and I think it deserves uh, you know people to continue to listen to it. Again, if you're you know if you're a fan of '90s black metal and you haven't heard the early Behemoth stuff, I think you should at least give it a shot. But that's all I got for now. Uh, look forward to some more cool stuff uh, coming up. Uh, I'll be doing a thrash video got a you know a little stack of some uh, some cool thrash albums uh some traditional heavy metal and some prog metal uh and i think some progressive rock too but most of you guys don't care about that anyways but as always uh i thank you for stopping by and we'll talk soon cheers